What is math? Why is math exists? We'll be answering one of those questions today. Hi guys and welcome to a new episode on this channel. Today we'll be talking about this book called The Osborne G Illustrated Math Dictionary. But before we start, we need a little background. What is math? Well, math is a short, it's short for mathematics. And it is a subject that talks a lot about numbers, and shapes, geometry, and loads and loads of more. You know, like there's addition signs, there's subtraction signs, and it has to do with numbers and sometimes even coordinate planes and sometimes even the funnest Rubik's Cubes. Yay, Rubik's Cubes! Or even your own body. Yes. And now... Now that we know that, we'll go on to the first part of the five-part series I want to talk about on math. First of all, we'll be going on to number and number facts. First of all, there are loads and loads of numbers. First of all, there are the ten types of number digits. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Those are all the digits that you can make. And then numbers can actually go infinitely, like negative numbers, like negative ten or negative twenty, or... Infinitely, like to a Google. No, not the Google that you use today. The Google with the one hundred zeros. But however, nothing to Google. Probably not the. Probably not even the universe. However, pi is actually more than a Google. And all of its digits are more than a Google in my theory. <laughs> that is. And now there are loads and loads of different relationships from numbers. A lot of numbers, such as one thirds, can be represented into other stuff, such as zero point three 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 after a million years. Three 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 three. I'm tired and I'm pretty old. All right, and it keeps on going and going forever. And just look. There are loads and loads of different things that I have to talk about here. There are also some things called rational and irrational numbers. Now, rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as a fraction, and irrational numbers are sometimes like the pi infinite, or or sometimes even that cannot be simplified into a simplified fraction. Now, math is pretty cool in all loads of ways, and numbers are its basic foundations. It's its basic structures, like its bones. And then the fractions are cool, but what about decimals? Decimals are whole, are not whole numbers, but parts of a whole number. They are equivalent to fractions. One half equals zero point five. Uh, five tenths equals zero point five. Five over five hundred. Five hundred and one. Five hundred and ten over one hundred equals zero point five one, and so on. Got it. Good. And this is exactly where a lot of things that happen here. Now, now let's talk about percentages. Now, what are percentages? Well, as you know, what fractions are? There's the new. That's the little number on the top of a line, and then there's the denominator, the bottom number. Like yeah, like that. There are what a percentage is a fraction with the denominator as one hundred. And now, percentage looks like the, the percent symbol looks like this. Let me get a piece of paper, and then draw it for you. Now it won't take a long. This is the percentage symbol, and then there are loads and loads of different ways that I want to talk about here. And now let's look at some sequences of numbers. Now sequences, like the Fibonacci sequence, goes on like this: zero, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. 8, 13, 21, and then so on. And the Fibonacci sequence's rule is this. The first previous two numbers will make the next digit. Like, for example, if you want to find the third digit of the Fibonacci sequence, but you only know the first two digits, then you just add the first two digits together and then you'll get the third digit. Got it? Yay! And that is how we really like math. Now, the Fibonacci sequence is also in this called the Fibonacci spiral. That looks like this. There is a rectangle. First of all, think of a rectangle. And then, draw a square inside that rectangle. And then, you, and then repeat the process in the smaller, in the smaller rectangle. In the smaller rectangle. And then do it again in another smaller rectangle. Then again, then again, then again. 
then again, and again, and then it go eventually gives you disc. And it's actually found a lot in art, so that's pretty cool. And that's pretty cool, yeah. So first of all, there it goes here, and then swirls around, swirls around, and back in here. And this is how it actually kind of looks like. It can also be found in a lot of Sonic art, so that's pretty cool. Also, it can be found in the Mona Lisa. And now let's look at comparing numbers. Comparing numbers can be found by looking if it's greater or equal to or less than or greater or equal to it. There are different types of symbols for this. Uh, this symbol, this symbol right over here says less than. And this symbol, this symbol over here, wait, right? This symbol over here equals greater than. And then... This, of course, means this uh, two dashed line right here equals equal to. And now, let's talk about rounding. Rounding numbers to its highest or simplest or highest or lowest term is like this. So when you round a number to its higher number, it's when you when the first, the last digit is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. When there is any of the digits, you round the next number digit into its next 10 or, or if it's the opposite, if the digit is 1, 2, 3, or 4, then you round down to its other 10. And that's where I really want to end this episode. So, I want to have a question for you. What is your favorite part of math and numbers and number facts? Please write your answers in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next part. See you then. Bye-bye!